Good morning, everyone. How are you? Hallelujah. The other half, how are y'all? Great, good and great. I love it. Amen. You know, a while ago, a pastor was asking, uh, you know, what we've been freed from and stuff like that. And I was meditating on that. And there's so many things I'm, I'm so happy and grateful that I've been freed from. But if I had to summarize it, I think I could boil it down to I'm free from a mentality that kept me in bondage. I'm free from a mentality that kept me in bondage. And that includes so many things. Amen. And let me tell you something, the journey continues. <laughs> I know some of you may look at look at the person or the pastor up in the pulpit and think, oh, wow, they got their act together. No, we're just further down the road. We're just further down the road. You know, we, we are, whether, whether you want to admit it or not, we all came from nothing. <laughs> Amen. And so I'm very thankful and grateful to God because... The mentality that's kept me in bondage has been broken and continues to be broken. Amen. So, hallelujah. Well, how many of y'all came ready to hear the word of God this morning? You know, I, I don't take it lightly when I when I have the opportunity to share at church because I do believe what the scripture says that that um, those who minister the word of God will be held to a higher responsibility. I'm accountable for the words that come out of my mouth. But I also want to challenge each and every one of you. Don't just hold that to us. I hope you come to church with that mentality that you're not just coming to check off a box and say, oh, well, I went this week, hallelujah. You know, punch your card. I hope you're coming with the same same um, seriousness and, and, and joy and expectation, but with the same mentality of, God, I'm coming because I need you. I'm coming because I need something fresh today. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I want to give a quick update about uh, my recent trip down to the Dominican Republic. Praise God. It was phenomenal. It was a great trip. Don't worry. We're not packing our bags to leave and move back. Hallelujah. You know, God's not done with us here, right? But, oh, my gosh, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal trip. I had an opportunity to go spend um, four days with one of our, our newest church plant and just be pouring out into those pastors um, they had a tons of questions. Once again, like I just shared, we're just a little further down the road than somebody else. When we started, when we were brand new, we had a lot of the same questions. I mean, simple stuff. They're like, well, my, my deacons don't agree on what we should do. How do I make a decision? You know, and, and it, the natural things affect the supernatural. What we do in the natural affects things in the supernatural. It, it reverberates. And so, you know, we're just down there helping them along their journey walking with them, giving them some words of advice, also just uh, being with them, communing with them. Um, and I don't know about y'all, but one thing I've learned about myself over these last few years is I don't like to do things by myself. A few, uh, well, about a month and a half ago, I was, I was working on a barn we were building, and my brother-in-law helped me for a few days, and then he had to, he had to go work. And so my wife's out there helping me build this barn, and I'm out there building it, and I say, hey, babe, will you come help me today? She goes, yeah, yeah. So she gets out there, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the work. She's not doing anything, you know. What else is new? No, I'm joking. I can say that because she's not here. Yeah, she'll see it. Edit that out, please. No, I'm joking. So she, she goes, well, what do you want me to do? You asked me to come help you, and I go, well, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? And she goes, you know what? You just don't like to work alone. And I go, you're right. I don't like to work alone. I, sh the work, well, it was hard work. It's lifting beams. It's screwing screws in that she can't reach and stuff like that. But you know what? I just don't like to be alone. I like to be in communion with other people. And that's something that, that, that God is speaking to my heart about and pouring out. And so even as my wife was just there with me, you know, and she did help a lot. She really did. She got the stuff down low that I didn't, couldn't reach. Amen. And um, it, we, she did help me a lot. But as I find on our journey in the Dominican Republic, our journey here, you know, God's opening up doors in Mexico as well. We're we are so excited about walking through those doors. Hopefully, at the beginning of next year, um, as the work of the ministry gospel missions that God has given us is growing. But one thing I'm learning in this season of life, God has us 
communing with people. And oftentimes we think, you know, we, we do these great big projects or, you know, um, if, if I'm not actually doing something, I'm not actually helping. But one thing I'm learning is some of the biggest help we can get is just being there. It's not anything we do. It's just being there. Are you with me? And the amazing thing about that is through that, we're seeing amazing kingdom growth. You know, my wife and I, we planted a church in Santo Domingo. We started it. There were four ladies um, who had never been to church before in their life. Thank God, because they never would have come back the second Sunday after hearing my first sermon, right? And we pastored that church for nine years. And when I went back a few Sunday ago, Sundays ago and I'm preaching, I didn't know half the people in the church. It's grown, it's grown that much. I mean, there's 30 new people there that I've never met in my life. And they're like, who's this white guy here, you know? It's like, I'm the real pastor. He's the replacement pastor. Now I'm joking. That's two things. No, 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 no. He, t- he tells me, he goes, Pastor, I'm just waiting on you. You tell me, and I'll move aside. I go, this is yours, brother. Run with it. Amen. And it's amazing. God's doing wonderful things, and the kingdom's growing. So we're, we're excited about that. Amen. So as I'm reflecting on this and, and, and the season of life we're in, and I don't believe it's just us, because as I, as I said, I look around and I see that, that many of us are just needing somebody to be with us. Just that communion, amen? And I feel that that's not just me and you. It's not horizontal. It's also vertical. This, in, this season of God, in this season of life, God is calling us and reminding us of our calling to be in communion with him. Father God, as we just prayed, Lord, I pray... Father God, that you give me the grace to share this word that you've given me, Father God. Lord, work through all the stuff in me so that your word is able to penetrate people's hearts and lives, Father God, and change them. But thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Communion. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 1.9, and you can read out of different versions, and it says it a little bit differently. But I want to read right here in 1 Corinthians 1.9. It says, God is faithful. I love it. You could stop right there. That's the best scripture. I love it. That's wonderful. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And as the scripture here mentions, it says this is a calling. Many people say, well, what's my calling in life? Am I called to be a pastor? Am I called to be a missionary? Am I called to be an usher? Am I called to, what's my calling? Your calling is to be in fellowship with Jesus. That's what the scripture says here. And whenever you look at that word fellowship in the Greek, in the original Greek, it's, pardon, I can speak Spanish and French and Italian and English, but I don't do Greek very well, so I might slaughter this. But it says, um, Golly, I'm going to mess it up. Koinonia? Koinonia? That's how we say it in Spanish. I don't know how you say it in English. How would you say it? Koinonia? Fellowship, whatever, in the Greek. We're not Greek here, so I'm not going to worry about it, right? And that word in in Greek, koinonia, means communion. And communion has a slightly different context than fellowship. You know, uh, communion, there's there's a give and take. There's, there's a connection. And so that brings me to my next question here. What exactly is communion? And I love this definition and uh, how John Piper, he explains it here. I'm a big John Piper fan. Um, and he says, communion refers to God's communication and presentation of himself to us. But it doesn't stop there. Together with our proper response to him with joy. Communion is God speaking to us and our response and joy. And we say joy because it would not be communion if God revealed himself in total wrath and we were simply terrified. If God revealed himself in total wrath and we're like, oh, oh my gosh, that's not communion. That's awe. That's, that's uh, uh, a true revelation. And to be quite honest with you, it would be a proper response. But it would not be communion. 
Communion assumes that God comes to us in love and that we respond joyfully to the beauty of his perfections and the offer of his fellowship. You follow me? I know I'm saying a lot. This is a mouthful. Are you with me? Let me start over right there. It says, communion assumes that God comes to us in love and that we respond joyfully to the beauty of his perfections and the offer of his fellowship. He may sometimes come with a rod of discipline, but even in our tears, we can rejoice in the Father's loving discipline. Oh, no, 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 no. That's never fun. You know what? Read Hebrews 12, 6 through 11. It'll confirm that. Even in his discipline, we can rejoice in the Father's loving discipline. Communion with God may lay us in ashes or make us leap, but it never destroys our joy. Because communion with God is our joy, according to Psalms 43.4, I believe, 43.3. So let me tell you something. If we don't take anything else home today, if all you get out of this message, write that scripture on your heart. 1 Corinthians 1 9. God has called you into communion with his son. And this communion is joy and joy in abundance. Why is that so important? Because from communion comes growth. From communion comes growth. I'm telling you. And the, I just gave a testimony in the Dominican Republic. I'm not, down, I'm not the boots on the ground anymore. I'm the boots on the ground here, not there. But we're communing with our pastors. We're, we're helping our teams. We're encouraging them. We're lifting them up, bringing joy, bringing encouragement. And what's happening? The work is growing. The church is growing. It's amazing what's happening. So through joy, through communion comes joy and comes growth. And for those of you who are hungry, don't worry. I think we're going to be a short message today, but a good message. So what is the purpose of our communion? Number two, communion with God is the purpose for which we were created. Communion with God is the purpose for which we were created. You know, I remember whenever we first became missionaries, before we went on the mission field, and we were trying to raise support, and I'm begging God. I'm like, God, what are we going to do? All I know is we're going to go be missionaries. You haven't told us what we're going to do. You know, uh, I'm trying to raise support. You know, people are like, oh, wow, you're going to be a missionary. What are you going to do? They want to know so that they can get behind it financially and help support us. And I go, oh, we're going to go be missionaries. And, and I, I was aggravated, and I said, God, what are we going to do? And God said, go love my people, and I'll show you what to do when you get there. That's good, but it's not a money-raising line, <laughs> you know? And we learned that that's what we were created for. God just called us to love people. And you know what? Long story short, before we left, a week before we left, we had like $1,500. When we left, we had nearly 27000 something like that. I mean, God, the money, we learned the money's not the deal for God. He can get the money. That's not a problem. But what we learned is communion is the purpose for which we were created. Communion with God and communion with our brother. Amen? Isaiah 43, 7 says, Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Now, I want us to look at something here. Glorifying God is not something we do. How many, we often think, oh, we did something, and that brings glory. Glorifying God is not something we do. After communing with him, glorifying God comes by communing with him. In the same way, I can come around and give all y'all high fives. We can go out and eat together, have lunch, shoot guns. I don't know, whatever you want to do. And we're going to have a good time. But when I commune with my wife, something comes out of that. Four little somethings, actually. They're hungry. Got to feed them, take care of them, and clothe them. But they, 
That's a glory, the Lord said. So just by communing, that's the glorifying God comes by communing with him. Many human deeds magnify the glory of God's goodness, but only if they flow from our contentment and communion with him. Contentment. How many of you know what contentment is? Go home, look it up in the dictionary, because what you think it is may be different than what it really is. Being content with God. Being content in our communion with him. You know what? Sometimes I have communion with God, and oh, my gosh, it is a glorious experience. I mean, you feel the heebie-jeebies. You get the goosebumps. You know, you can hear. You're, like, connected, and you hear God. And then other times I go to communion with God, and I just kind of sit there and daydream a little bit. You know? But it's not about what happens in that time. It's about, you know what, God? I'm happy whether you give me the goosebumps, and I'm happy just to sit down and daydream a little bit. I don't know about y'all. My mind's all, the wheels are always turning. And so sometimes when I can just sit down and relax and daydream about anything except what's going on in the world around me, that's a pretty good time. But we got to learn to be content with that. In other words, what we do is not what glorifies God, but our time spent with him is what brings glory to God. Because time we spend with him, the communion we have with him, from that fruit comes, and that fruit is what glorifies God. You and I are very limited in our ability to do anything that is going to bring glory to God. I'll tell you one thing I'm excellent at. I'm excellent at creating opportunities for God to not be glorified. I'm, I'm, I'm a pro at creating opportunities for people to say, Oh, my gosh, I thought he was a Christian. I'm good at that. What I'm not so good at is actually doing things that bring glory to God. So how do we do that? Just spending time with him, getting to know him. And you know what? I'm not going to put a time limit. We used to put time limits on that thing. You know, Pastor, I think last week said, oh, I, I was so condemned. I didn't get up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. and spend my hour with the Lord. You know what? I don't either. If I rolled out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning, you know what I say? Lord, it's 4 o'clock somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> if I roll out of bed at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning, I say, Lord, it's 4 a.m. Thank you, Jesus. I think there was a song about that, Margaritaville or something. Five, Mar something. I don't know. I'm a Christian. I don't know. <laughs> Jacob told me. Our time spent with the Lord, our time in communion with the Lord is what brings glory to him. Amen. So how is communion possible? And th this, for I think for the majority of us here, is just going to be kind of uh, uh, passing over, you know, just going back over things we've learned. But you know what? It's good to go back over things we learn because we often forget things and we often forget important things. Amen. So if communion is a glorious fellowship with God, and that is our calling of existence, how does it work? Because here's the deal. God is light. We're darkness. You don't believe your darkness? Ask your spouse. They'll confirm it. You don't believe your darkness? Look at your mother-in-law. She'll confirm it, right? So what communion does a light have with darkness? They don't. There is no. The scripture's clear on that. But thankfully... God is faithful, as we read in 1 Corinthians 1, 9. It starts out, it says, God is faithful. God took the initiative upon himself in order to reconcile himself to us, his enemies. We often forget that, but let me tell you something. We were enemies of God. When I look back at my past life, it wasn't, wasn't too long ago. 20 years ago. The older I get, the more I realize that wasn't too long ago. You know what? I was an enemy of God. I wasn't out trying to, you know, wage war against him, but sure didn't care about what he had to say. Sure didn't care about what he had to say. And Galatians 3.13 says, But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. 
because God gave Christ as our substitute, we can be reconciled with God and enjoy peaceful communion with him. That's one thing we don't realize. In the Old Testament, under the old system and law, before Christ, B.C., the only communion that, that anybody had with God was of the wrath. And it's not because God's some bad God and he's just trying to destroy things. It's just you can't play with fire and not get burned. I mean, it's, 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 it's a law. It's, how many of you ever played with fire and didn't get burned? No, you get burned. You play with it, you're going to get burned. You know, my brother-in-law, he was in the Marine Corps. He goes, I've never met a bomb, a bomb expert that wasn't missing two fingers. They might be an expert in it, but they got burned twice. It just happens. And so just because of the way it's set up, the only the, the majority of the experience, if not the only experience, was the wrath of God. And by it was by far the majority of the experiences. And so today, we've been reconciled with God to have peaceful communion with God. I don't know about y'all, but I like it when things are peaceful. And the amazing thing about peaceful communion, hell can be going on all around you. But we're good in here. Good in here. Amen. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6 says, Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion and crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. I love that. I love that. God makes it possible. We just respond, yes, Lord. May your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. We commune with him. When we look at this, there's a call to war, right? What's a call to war? Hey, guys, we're going to go fight. Let's go. That's a type of a calling. Telephone call. But what we're talking about here is a calling, a purpose. You were created for this. This isn't something temporary, and when the war is over, you can go back to doing your life. No, this is our life. If you've been wondering, hey, what's my calling? What am I supposed to do? This is it. Oh, but that sounds so simple. You want, you want me to give you a secret? Most things with God are simple. He does not complicate anything. Oh, but that's so hard. You mean I got to quit? I got to do it? Yeah, you got to, but let me tell you something. It is a lot easier than the alternative. And that's even when I started the message, and I was thinking about those things I'm thankful for. That mentality that kept me in bondage had me blinded where I would see things, and I'd go, oh, no, 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 it's just impossible. I can't do it. No, it, it is possible. That mentality needs to be broken over us because when God says we can do it, it ain't hard. It ain't hard. Just getting through that stinking thinking is the hard part. Amen. Now I know nobody here suffers from stinking thinking. That's just that's just me and the, the Methodist over there, but we love our Methodist family here in town. They're good people. I'm gonna close with this. And just because I'm closing doesn't mean we're done. There's a lot more that could be said to the calling upon our lives. Even, even this call, God's call of communion over us. But I want to close with this in Isaiah 53, 10 through 11. 
It says, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. That word satisfied means fulfilled, completely filled, and it means joyous. Because of the joy of communion we have with God, even anguish is satisfying. I normally don't like to pick people out in the middle of a sermon, but I do feel I have a confidence to do that. And I would like to ask Brad, Brad, we've all known your journey and how it, it's been pretty hard, hasn't it? I'm sure there's been lots of tough times, maybe even call it anguishful, if that's a word. But would you change anything? No. Would you change anything, not change anything because it's been so terrible? Because it's been good. Because it's been good. You know what? My, my, my struggle wasn't addiction to drugs or alcohol, stuff like that. My struggles were, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm still discovering what they were. <laughs> I'm still discovering what they were. But you know what? I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change one thing. And I made some bad decisions along the way. I made some bad decisions after being a Christian, after serving God. And I still wouldn't change anything. Because through that, it led me into communion with him. I'm not proud of a lot of the things I've done. I can guarantee you that. But it has brought me into closer communion with God. Amen.